as they come to the wire. It is Brett Hanover by two and a half. It's the 75th Little Brown Jug from the Delaware County Fairgrounds in Delaware, Ohio. Good morning, racing fans. Yours truly, Roger Houston, Dave Brower, Dave B. and Connie. Wendy Ross to join our broadcast as well today. Another beautiful day in Delaware, Ohio. It couldn't be any nicer, Roger. Just a wonderful, wonderful day to be part of this uh, epic celebration. It's not quite the way we expected it to happen this year, the big 75th anniversary. But we're just happy that we are here to bring you all of the coverage throughout the day. And what a nice race card Mr. Bianconi has assembled for us, including those two eliminations uh, for the 75th Little Brown Jug. They'll come up as races 15 and 16 on what will be a 20 race card. Well, I had some pretty good horse flesh to work with, so it wasn't that tough. But uh, it is a pretty good uh, 20 race card, including the final of the 75th Little Brown Jug. Yeah. Looking forward to it. A big race. Uh, we had a great race yesterday in the jug yet. Boy, Party oh Girl my. Hill put on an, and you're still saying, wow, that's how good she was with that uh, stakes record, track record, world record, first elimination here, the uncovered assault and a steamrolling move from Dexter Dunn with Party Girl Hill, and she was just awesome again in the final. Yeah, to see her the first time in person was, like, breathtaking how good <laughs> yeah. she was yesterday. As an announcer, I must admit, I think I was at the back of the pack when Dexter moved his Philly to the top. And when I got back, he was on top by two links. I mean, I totally missed that move. But people say it was just unbelievable the speed she showed coming out of the three-hole there. And yeah, the the Elim was even more impressive in my mind, though. The first stop and just back half in 53, like she was breaking sticks. It was, and she had to do it, you know, first up, which is never easy to do here at the Delaware County Fair. But when she moved, she moved with authority. And that was no slouch that was on the lead. That was the no. two-year-old Dan Patch champion, Lion Sentinel, earner of over $1 million. And she kind of measured her off late. Uh, it was just a prelude of what was to come in the final a little bit later on. And she's such a special horse, Roger, now 11 for 11. And I hope, and I mean this, I hope she can go through the rest of the year undefeated because she deserves it because she's the real thing. She does deserve it, but you and I both know it's hard to be super sharp and good in each and every one of these sophomore stakes races because they go so fast nowadays, but she's got the right trainer to do it. <laughs> I was go just ahead. getting ready to say, I, I'm coming out of my chair. I says, yes, but I think Chris Ryder will do the job. I At least I, I'm, I'm in past experience. And, and everyone's going to wonder. What would have happened if she was racing today? Well, you know, we, we faced this problem <laughs> right. last year. It wasn't even a problem. It was right. just a speculation, a speculation. with Laura yeah. Wee Butte. But she put on such a show last year, too. And then uh, equaled, if not bettered, by the performance yesterday. Two great champions, yep. for sure. Also on the broadcast today is Wendy Ross, and she's in the Jug Barn here at Delaware. Wendy. Well, hello, guys, and thank you so much. And hello to everyone from the Jug Barns. It's Jug Day 2020. The sun is starting to peak out after a cool morning here in Delaware, Ohio. This beautiful barn is housing a really nice group of talented pacing colts and geldings. Trainer Ron Burke has entered two in in search of his third Little Brown Jug trophy. Tony and Lanya also has entered three. But the Ohio connections of Catch the Fire looking to fulfill a dream of winning the elusive Little Brown Jug trophy. We also have the old oaken bucket for three-year-old trotting colts and geldings the miss versatility final featuring the star trotting mare manchego for trainer nancy tactor and much much more i hope everyone has had a fantastic week tuning in and i hope everyone enjoys the excitement that's coming your way today best of luck to everyone hey guys back up to you thank you wendy and uh, dave in the past few days uh, jay wolf publicity director here at uh, delaware ohio uh, came up with a, a promotion to say since everything's different this year because of COVID-19 uh, 
somebody to sing the national anthem. We do, Roger. And uh, after a nice uh, internet contest, uh, we did pick a winner. And her name is Lexi Baldacino. She's 22 from Millstone, uh, New Jersey. She's the daughter of a prominent horse owner, Frank Baldacino. Of course, he was part of the team behind Hanalore Hanover. Lexi studied dance and theater at Penn State University in the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in New York City. She's currently a New York City-based dancer, singer, and actor. She's got several credits as well, including The Wedding Singer. But, as she says, due to current circumstances, live theater has yet to resume. However, I am very much looking forward to performing on stage again, hopefully in the near future. So with no more said for our national anthem, this afternoon, this morning, here is Lexi Baldacino. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fights or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Lexi Baldacino, our national anthem. Nicely done. Yeah, I think that was excellent. Mm -hmm. That was the uh, submission that the, uh, I guess the uh, members of the uh, Little Brown Jug Society chose, and uh, certainly a wonderful rendition by Lexi from my home place of New Jersey. Congratulations to her. Hopefully she will get back to work soon, and a big shout-out to her father, Frank. I'm sure he's a very proud papa. Changes and corrections in today's racing program. We'll start off in the fifth race, the one. Mick Matters make the driver Mike Wilder. Mike Wilder gets the call to drive the one McMasters in the fifth. Ninth race, the two, Sir Jesse. Wilder gets the call to replace Trace Tietrich on the two, Sir Jesse. Mike Wilder scratched the seven, Flimstein. Flimstein is scratched. In the 17th race, number eight, Pat Matters scratched. Scratched the eight, Pat Matters in race 17. And in the 18th race, number five, Living the Beach Life has been scratched. Scratched the five, Living the Beach Life in race number 18. Those are your changes and corrections in today's racing program. By the way, just throw this in. The number one driver to pick up drives with <laughs> drivers not showing up here at Delaware for one reason or another, Mike Wilder, and it may be a world's record. I mean, does Mike ever not you know, say no to anybody, or does he just automatically say, I'll, I'll be nice and I'll drive your horse? Mike is truly a nice guy, and I think I doubt that he would ever say, no, I won't drive your horse. <laughs> anyway, good, Mike, good to know. Good, good to know. Good luck in the little brown jug this afternoon as well. Here are our handy. Oh, by the way, i got to mention, um, <laughs> I thought I was going to have a good day handicapping. Uh, well, I had eight winners, which I guess is not too bad. But, oh, did the others put me to sleep. <laughs> Wendy, the winner yesterday. She was? Twelve. Oh. Twelve winners for Wendy. That's an awesome performance. Eleven for Dave. And going into our final, or Dave Brower, that is. I still have zero for the week. Yeah. <laughs> going into today's <laughs> final, Wendy, 28. Dave Brower, 28. <clears throat> Let's go on. <laughs> 25. I've got 25. So good enough. Good enough. Within, Should be a heck of a day. Within striking distance. First race, first half of the early double. 
Ohio Breeders Championship, two-year-old Colton Gelding Thanks. Pace, field of six, 2-1-4, Heart of Chewbacca. Yeah, it's going to be tough to beat Heart of Chewbacca in here. Uh, uh, Roger, track record uh, performance up at the Northfield uh, not too long ago. An amazing second, although beaten by Charlie May in the uh, Ohio Sire Stakes final here. But, you know, inside speed, Dan Noble, the rail, he should go wire to wire. And, of course, his race secretary, I'm bowing out of the picks race here. I'll give Wendy's selection. She's the hottest handicapper anyway. She also went with Heart of Chewbacca, 2-1-4. In the second race, Buckeye Stallion Series, two-year-old Colton Gelding, pace field of seven, two, six, five, four. I like Imagine It. I'm going to go with Imagine It as well. It's uh, Tim Tietrich switch, but I like this Gelding's uh, record, Roger. Nine for 12 on the season with a little over 44,000 banked. Again, speed, key, inside post. Tim Tietrich will take no prisoners. Two, one, four, five. Uh, Wendy's going to go with the five, Rockin' Airway, on top of the two, Imagine It, with the four, Big Money Mike third. In the third race, Ohio Breeders' Championship, three-year-old Philly Pacers, field of six, five, one, two, McMarkle Sparkle. I hope she can get back to her early season four. Boy, she had such a tough trip in that uh, OSS final. Uh, she'll try to bounce back. I'm going to stay inside again. I've got a lot of twos today, Roger. Tyler George, the uh, Hoosier Park base trainer, sometimes the leader. He's got beautiful beach with Tim Tietrick. Again, it's all about the speed. Tim's brother drove this Philly to two straight wins, two, one, five. And Wendy went a different way. Six horse field. You guys have three different horses picked. She went with the one Crown Time Rocket. Fairly recent addition to the Burke Barn. One, two, six. Fourth race, Ohio Breeders Championship, two year old Colton Gelding Pace Field of Six. Two one five. Charlie May, my favorite two year old this year. We got to speak with owner Don Tiger, owner and breeder Don Tiger, and uh, the story behind Charlie May it was a good one. We'll touch up on that later. Brett Miller has uh, taken over the driving recently. She's got three st he's got three straight wins, two five one. And Wendy went uh, same way, two five three. In the fifth race. It is a old oaken bucket, three-year-old trot, 83,000 on the line, 543, the outside, Hobbs and Jason Bartlett. I had the opportunity to massage his gums back in the jug bar. Jason Bartlett? No, no. <laughs> That's what I was oh, going to okay. ask. Well, Hobbs is the New York Sire Stakes champion, so it's nice to see Jim Campbell uh, bring him on out for the old oak and bucket. I got to chat with Jim briefly yesterday. He's got several chances this week, but I tried to beat this one. Going to stay with the uh, Indiana horse. Byron Hooley ships in Emma Town, bud. Ronnie Wren Jr., 4-5-3. And uh, Wendy's also stuck with the New York Sire Stakes champ, Hobbs, 5-4-3. Sixth race, Buckeye Stallion Series, three-year-old Philly Pacers, seven of them. Oh, the outside. Hoochie Girl and Tyler Smith, 7-1, 3-4. She deserves to be the favorite. Let's swing against. I wanted to pick a Pete and Melanie Wren horse today, and this is it. Number three, odds on Athens. I go all the way back to that race at Northfield in the Buckeye Stallion Series where she wired them from the rail. Wendy went the same way. Odds on Athens on top, 3-1, 4-6. Seventh race, Ohio Breeders Championship, three-year-old Colton Gelding pace, 48,000. 451, Elver Hanover. He's top of his game right now. Boy, what a special horse he's been for those connections. He is a Gelding, so we get to see him on the racetrack as long as he stays healthy and sound. He should dominate this Ohio Breeders Championship, 423. Wendy also stuck with Elver Hanover, 412. Eighth race, Buckeye Stallion Series. Three-year-old Philly Pacers, seven of them. Five, three, four, one, Narina Hanover. Roger, it's going to be an interesting day. We've got a lot of different top selections, you and I. I'm going to take the Chris Page co-owned pole sitter. That's the one corner pocket. Lasix has helped. One, five, two, and six. And Wendy also stuck with the five, Narina Hanover, five, three, one, four. In the ninth race, standard bread, two-year-old Colton Gelding Trot, $47,000, one four six two. Arnold and Dickie and Dave Pallone. Love the connections here. Hall of Famers all around. Chuck Sylvester, Dave Pallone. A shout-out to co-owner Gil Short, who can't be with us uh, out in Virginia. One six four five for me. And Wendy stuck with the one as well, one four six five. Tenth race, Buckeye Stallion Series, two year old Colton Gelding Pace, field of eight, three, four, seven, one. I like King's Cruiser, the King of the Fairs, Jeff. A nice song, Earth. Totally different pick for me in this very wide open division. Going to stick on the Chris Page bandwagon. He gets the drive back for Brian Brown here. The last time Chris drove, feeling Western, the five. He won, hoping that carries over again. Love that seven to one morning line, five, six, three. 
And Wendy stuck with the three Kings Cruiser, 3612. In the 11th Ohio Breeders' Championship, three year old Philly Pace field of seven. 254. I like Artful Dancer and Dan Noble. As do I. Nice Philly by Yankee Cruiser. She's been in as consistent as you can be all season here. Inside speed, Dan Noble right to the front, 235. And Wendy's going to go with the horse that won the Sire Six Championship, the five pen paper page, 523. In the 12th race, Buckeye Stallion Series, two year old Colton Gelding Pace, field of eight, 2431 Twig. Impossible to go against Twig in this spot. Mike Palamas has a nice one by Mr. Apples. He's a Gelding, but he's five for six already in his career, 2463. Wendy's also on Twig, 2341. In the 13th race, the Ohio Breeders' Championship, three-year-old Colton Gelding Pacers, $48,000, one four six two Ocean Rock. I, I, I would love him to see take on national competition. Yeah, he was not Little Brown Jug eligible, which is unfortunate because I'm sure Dan and Christy Noble would have put him in there as if he needed it. He drew the rail. He'll get a little test from Stanford Court and Ronnie Wren Jr., but so far, Ocean Rock has been unbeatable. Yeah, he's had quite a year. In fact, show wagering barred in this 13th race when he went one four five two 14th race buckeye stallion series a two-year-old colton gelding pace eight of them oh the dreaded eight hole weekend pass and dan noble nice eight five two one nice homebred there roger but i'm not going with post eight there let's try yankee sparkle tyler smith here on one with speed he does well when he teams up with trainer trent stoller five eight one two and Wendy went with a completely different horse. That's the two Marrakesh Express, 2481. 15th race, three year old Colton Gelding pace field of seven, 5123. I like catch the fire in the first elimination you know, the, of the little brown jug. Exactly, Roger. This is more of a route, I think, for us than a necessarily pick. I think catch the fire was extremely good again last time in his Kentucky Sire Stakes division. Lay six on Mike Wilder. If he's good again, he is the one to beat, 5132. And Wendy also stuck with the uh, hometown horse for her. That's the five, catch the fire, 5123. And I must admit, I think Mike Wilder does. Uh affect our handicapping in this one because I'd love to see him win the championship. We all, yeah. yeah, we all would like to see that. Yeah. For all the connections, what a great story. Yeah. And this is a colt that's been good right from the get-go last yeah. year at two. No doubt about it. 16th race, the second elimination. Three-year-old colt and gelding pace. Each elimination, $111,800. Three, two, six, four, the Canadian Invader, War We Vital. I'm going to go with him, too. I took a little another look at those replays of his last two stakes, the races in the Sun Beach somewhere, and Simcoe. They were both impressive. This horse is coming around at the right time, and he, he's got this part of his pedigree. Roger, did you know that he's a half-sister to War We U Butte? Three, one, five, two. Wendy also stuck with the uh, newcomer from Canada, three War We Vital, three, two, five, four. 17th race, uh, Miss Versatility final. Philly and Mare Trotters, 87,500. Scratch the eight, Pat Matters due to sickness. Seven of them, 5271. Manchego, the hot. Dexter Dunn. Six winners yesterday, including the Jughead for the Double D. This is an intriguing race. I'm looking forward to this one, guys, between Okus Vonstead and last year's winner, Plunge Blue Chip. Manchego has the five. I don't know. What is Oka going to do? Will he try to set the pace and steamroll, or will he let Manchego go and try and steal it? Five, two, seven, the same as you. Wendy's also on that five, two combination. She goes five, two, one, seven in the Miss Versatility. Standard bread is the 18th race. Two-year-old Colton Gelding Pacer scratch the five. Living the beach life due to sickness. Six, seven, and eight slide in a spot. Nine and ten are trailers in the second tier. First time we've had a ten hole this week, I believe. Six, one, three, four. Chase H. Hanover. Same top two, reverse order. I'm going to go with Matt Kikaley. Hopefully we'll speak to him a little bit later on in the uh, broadcast. Luz Perlman looking for a bounce back effort here. I see that one race where he was three to five against a buck at that Hanover. That's high praise. Bounce back. One, six, eight, three. Wendy also stuck with the Burke trainee, Luz Perlman. One, six, three, four. You know, Dave, you don't realize how many times the reverse order order 
has favored Dave Brower over Roger Houston. This week? This week, okay, yeah. Okay, well, I'm due. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you are. Yeah. I mean, you've been beating me up on this reverse order. Okay. You always got the right one, and I come up second best. I, I need one more day of it, Roger. Yeah. 19th race, Buckeye Stallion Series, three-year-old Philly Pacers, eight of them, four, two, six, one. I like big risk cruiser i'm hoping for a big day for dan noble i think he will this uh, one has had tremendous uh, their connections have had a tremendous week at delaware trainer virgil morgan jr got his 100th win carl howard the jez morale stable lasix added recently two in a row can't beat you here roger four three eight one and wendy's on four two one three also big risk cruiser going to be rough to pick up ground on you and Wendy because we do have a lot of agreements today. And in a way, you kind of expect that on Jug Day. You do. I mean, there are some races with, you know, stick-out favorites, and you don't have to pick all of them. You can take a shot every now and then. But uh, for the most part, I would say, you know, a, yeah. good, a good handicapping job. Now we'll see if we're right throughout the uh, afternoon. Yep. It is going to be a great harness racing program this afternoon at Delaware. Right now... Uh, well, we finally started to see some blue skies some, somewhere around 10 a.m. this morning and get more and more as the afternoon progresses. I don't know. Are they still calling for maybe 80 degrees today? I, I heard 80 degrees. Yep. That was the mm -hmm. number. Uh, as long as the humidity doesn't go along with it, which it's not supposed to, it'll be a very pleasant afternoon. And uh, like you said, it's not a blazing sunshine yet, but that can change in a heartbeat. Yeah. Delaware, Ohio. The home of the Little Brown Jug, the 75th Little Brown Jug. We had a discussion last night at dinner of what we're going to do next year. <laughs> and the leading contender for next year's logo, 75 plus, plus one. one. I like it. I like that, too. I like that, too. Plus one. We need we need to do it up special next year. If oh, we we yeah. will. Yeah. We will. No doubt about it. We had so many things planned this year for Delaware as far as uh, – a uh, 75th anniversary package where people could get a commemorative ticket, uh, a shirt, golf shirt, you know, a hat, uh, jewelry and stuff like that for a certain figure and stuff. And I think they were sold like hot cakes. I think you're right. There and certainly isn't any swag rolling around this week. Nobody, uh, you know, yeah. made anything Well, up. the closest we got is that uh, Bow River uh, came up with a uh, pendant or whatever you want to call it. Uh, that says the 75th Little Brown Jug, and I believe they're available for purchase in the uh, Jug uh, in the uh, Delaware County Fair Board office. Or twenty dollars each. Or possibly BowRiverJewelry.com. They're one of our big sponsors here. So I don't go know to their if they, I don't. I guess he would take. Well, if mail. you called them up, I'm yeah. sure he would do yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, I got mine, and uh, they also have one for the 50th Jug. Yeah was out yesterday as well. And with the weather this week, the place would have been jammed. Oh, make no doubt about yeah. it. Everybody would have been saying, this is the best week ever. I can't remember. A better, I can't remember I, a better week. No, we've always had one day where we had rain in the morning and then we get sunshine, but nothing like this week has been. Biblical swarm of bees in the infield. We've had that before. <laughs> yeah, well, we still got them this year. Yeah. Yeah. Fast track today. Right now, the temperature is 70. Will it go up? And the winds are calm. I believe they were calm yesterday. They were. The only day of the week it was really somewhat breezy was on Sunday when the wind was blowing from uh, right to left. And then I think on Monday it went from left to right, but not as bad. really has no impact on the races. It just has an impact on the temperature. I checked with Greg Kuhn, our track conditioner here that comes in for Jug Week, and I asked him about the wind. It does it have any effect on the races? And he agreed very little effect because of the uh, slant of the racetrack where the inside is kind of, well, it's what, six six feet lower than the outside of the racetrack, I think it is. Yeah, it, it, the, the turns are so nicely banked yeah. here. That's, uh, you know, what helps the uh, closers when they're able to win. And, you know, earlier in the week we saw, you know, some front enders get a little bit tired. But now, not yesterday. Yesterday they were hanging on a little bit better, and I think the strip will be even primer for speed today you know and that's one thing about the tracks over in europe and um i can't remember back to adelaide in australia but over in europe there was very little banking on any of the racetracks oh, they are flat most of them now uh, it's a little different in sweden but in uh, ireland and wales uh, of course in wales they race on get grass right so there's no banking <laughs> 
No banking in Wales. Turf harness race. We need to get that going. No, we tried that at the Meadowlands once. Didn't work. Didn't work. You know, yeah, that's because. I you remember that. Yeah. You that know is won that race? Now, wait, I'm going to have to tell you. Yeah. That's because you don't know how to condition for a grass, cor- or grass uh, racing in the States. They have absolutely no problem whatsoever racing on the grass in Ireland. No problem. You know who won that race at the Meadowlands? We're going back many, many years when we tried this. I should. I remember. Chris Ryder. I was going to say, I vaguely remember Chris Ryder. And he was yeah. like, he went off at like five to one. I remember he was my top pick. I, I, I just wish I had bet on the race because yeah. he uh, he knew what to do. Now, remember, over in, in Ireland, it's a half-mile track to begin with. So the turns and such, the race bikes do not slide into the turn. They condition it with a very heavy roller after each race. Each race, they bring this roller out, just like we bring our hair out, and they roll the racetrack. And I have seen absolutely no problem with racing on the turf or grass or whatever you want to call it in Wales and in Ireland. Let me give you guys a little heads up on uh, some of our interview guests that we're uh, hoping to get uh, on the headset back. Right off the bat, we go right to the top here. After before after the post parade for race one, it's none other than the all-time leading driver here at the uh, Delaware County Fair. It will be Dave Miller. Uh, after the post parade for race two, we owe Ryan Stahl an apology from yesterday, but thank God we'll get to talk to him as well. And then we're going to have a, a little break before we get Dexter Dunn and Tim Tetrick. So that's a little heads up, folks, for our couple of interviews uh, getting ready to go. Well, I'm going to get out of here and make my way over to the infield and be with Jason and the races and such. And I know you guys are going to appreciate it much more to have the beautiful Wendy Ross. Yes. All right. Roger, have a great day out there. Thanks, Roger. Should mention too on the wagering front, we have a pick four heavy car today. I think there were four pick fours, guaranteed pick four starting in race 11, 10,000 guarantee, and a fifteen thousand dollar guarantee starting with the Jug Elims in race 15. Uh, they'll blow by those uh, guarantees today. Yeah, they say. did. They did yesterday, and it was yeah. a good betting day, from what yeah. I understand, right? Yeah, the, the action's been good considering there's no live crowd. The sending's been pretty good. Well, that's what we like to see, and we love everybody uh, stepping in and firing away. Hopefully, those uh, wagering counts are. Uh, loaded up and ready to go on what's going to be a long day but a very fun day and it should be uh, definitely one to remember here hopefully for the right reasons and not necessarily the wrong reasons okay. on the 75th anniversary little brown jug day what are you most looking forward to today it's hmm. a tough call there's some really good intriguing races yeah yeah i, I think just the jug itself being kind of wide open okay. some years like like the jug got yesterday we kind of knew who was going to win going in we did but it's always easy after the race today you, know? you could make a case for three four five horses okay you know? i want to see ocean rock yeah because i haven't you know i don't remember if he i think he raced here last year but i want to see him as a three-year-old i want to see manchego and i yes. want to see what oka svonstead does in that race because he controls it the plunge blue chip on the inside and the rocket ship felicity shagwell on the outside yes and then of course the jug races uh they don't need any further hype it will be uh it should be a fun afternoon absolutely all right, as we get ready to uh, pop Wendy back onto the headset here, up oh, there's the bugle. Guess what? They're out on the racetrack for race number one, the first stakes event of the afternoon. It's the Ohio Breeders' Championship for three-year-old Colton Gelding Pacers. Two-year-old Colton Gelding Pacers are on the track for the Ohio Breeders' Championship. First division, pace at one mile, a purse of $62,446, sponsored by Post Printing. A field of six, there are no changes. In fact, in the early double races one and two, there are no changes. Win place show, daily double, perfected trifecta wagering. Number one is Laugh Again Hanover, owned by Smigliel of Lenders, Ohio. Richardson of Aurora, Ohio. And Gil Martin of Sagamore Hills, Ohio, trained by Laura Searway with Dexter Dunn. Dave Miller coming up. Well, the two is Dennis Owens of Hamilton, Ohio, and Norman Ray Racing LLC of Xenia, Ohio's Heart of Chewbacca, trained by Ron Burke with Danny Noble. Chris Page drives the three. Hill, yeah, for Burke Racing. Pennsylvania, Knox Services of Ohio, Jerry and Teresa Silva. Purnell and Libby of Florida, Weaver Brasimi of Pennsylvania, trained by Ron Burke. The four is Caviar Sergeant for Caviar Farms of Vienna, Virginia, trained by Brian Brown, Ryan Stoll. The five is Levan Stables Incorporated of Woodstock, Ohio's Calvin L, trained by Hank Levan. Hank Levan is up. And the six is Take a Stand by Carol Jean Noble of Cedarville, Ohio, trained by Dan Ader. 
Kyle Waiter in the sulky. That's the field for the first race. The Ohio Breeders' Championship two-year-old Colt and Gelding Pace at one mile. He purses $62,446. Win play show. Perfected trifecta. First half of the early double. No changes in races one and two. The first race, Ohio Breeders' Championship sponsored by Post Printing. Thank you very much, uh, Jason Settlemore. And uh, we start right at the top. I told you, no hesitation here on Little Brown Jug Day. We have the one and only Hall of Famer Dave Miller on the headset in the uh, back paddock. There's Dave. Hey, Dave, thanks for being part of the program here. Listen, you got here uh, earlier this week. I, I really just want to see what you felt when you pulled in that gate off of Route 23. It's a little bit weird, huh? Yeah, it was a lot different, you know. Uh, uh, not to see any, uh, you know, fans or even in Midway or... Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely different. The campers as well. Now, you ha what, do you, re you remember back to your first Little Brown Jug? You had a nice chat with Bob Hayden the other day. Tell us about it. I think Brett Hanover won that one, didn't he? Yeah. I'm just kidding you, Dave. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you know, I was informed today by my cousin that I was here in 1970. Huh. You're like, well, thanks, most, but no most thanks. Happy, most, most happy fellow won it that year. But, but the only one that I remember, the first one I remember was uh, Keith Stillenauer, 1976. Okay, 1976. I think I, that's the year the Meadowlands opened. So how about yeah, that? That's yeah. way back. You know, there have to be just so many amazing memories going through your head uh, performing out on this strip. <laughs> G give us a couple yeah. of them. I mean, I we can't, I, I know we can't you know, talk all day, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like uh, when I when I first came here, uh, you know, I was just a kid, and uh, at the time, you know. Uh, you know how technology is now. You can follow these horses, see them. But like back then, you know, I, I seen Governor Skipper up close, and I was like amazed. And uh, just you know the stables and the and the drivers, and you know what, you're finally seeing them in person. You know, and like it's, you know, I was a bit starstruck. You've won five little brown jugs. I always like to think that maybe you know the most special day you had was back in 2003 when you swept it with uh, no pan intended. But you won 10 races that day. How on earth did you accomplish that? Yeah, it was, I was. <laughs> it was my day. <laughs> you got to have those here. You know, you got to have have things working your way. That's for sure. And just going back, David. You know, the people that are watching that are under 30, there was no seeing races you might see a simulcast here and again one on a card or you'd have to read about it in horseman and fairwold magazine so i mean the horses and drivers you'd see black and white pictures of them that was about it right right i i was i i didn't go far that far back but uh, all my pictures have been in color <laughs> <laughs> well with the purple colors you, you know it plays off a little bit better in those uh, kinds of photos go ahead wendy hey yeah. dave it's wendy what's going on I'm uh, just getting ready for today. Good to see you. Yep. Good, so, good, good to be here. So I was in Lexington Sunday. I mean, what a show you put on down there, friend. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I had I had a good day. I had, I had some really good horses. And uh, you know what? They, they all showed up, and we had a great day. That's what it's all about, right? Yep. Dave, today, uh, who do you have that uh, you're driving that, that impresses you? Uh, you? You know what? I, I, got, I got quite a few drives, you know, but... Uh, I don't really have a, a favorite that I can say, you know what, I guarantee this thing won't lose, you know. I'm just going to have to work out work out the best trips I can and, you know, maybe get lucky. Some well, days those are the best days. So, yeah. Right? Yeah. When you don't have too much to expect, but they just come to, sometimes just shake out to be the best days. You, right. You never know uh, what can happen. But let's take a look at uh, the two that you have in the 75th anniversary Little Brown Jug. You are seeking your sixth. You're the all-time leader there, I think. Later Dudes will show up for a brand new barn uh, this afternoon, Nancy Tactor, and we had her on the headset briefly yesterday, and I said this, I said, well, you got Later Dudes into your barn, and what is the very first thing you did to him? You know the story, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and expound upon that. Yeah, they lightened him up a couple pounds there, so, uh, <laughs> you know what, uh, I had raced him for Brian, and uh, I told her, I said, you know what, I, I agree with you on that one, I, I thought the horse really uh, um was having some attitude problems and definitely wasn't putting out all he could always got so uh we'll see if it worked you know i mean sometimes that turns them right around you know and sometimes it doesn't so. well he's going to the gate for some great ohio connections there the country club acres joe sabraco acadia farms and uh, jck2 properties it's got to be a little extra special when you can win the little brown jug for ohio people oh definitely definitely those are the best ones you know i tell you what i've, I've had some really good uh memories with the canadian uh connections too i mean they really love the little brown jug all the canadian 
Canadian too. And uh, you know what? I, I think, matter of fact, all five, all five of my jugs have been either Canadian or Ohioans. So, so uh, huh. That's, yeah. a, that's a pretty good split. Yeah, yeah you know what? It's, it's been pretty cool. In the second elimination, that's the 16th race. You were not uh, – your horse, Cattle Wash, didn't get much love from the post gods. But I read some comments from trainer Ronnie Burke that he thinks he's got him heading in the right direction now after a couple of health problems. Yeah, you know what? He, he uh, His last couple of starts, he's been, uh, you know, sharp, you know, and uh, racing racing really well. But uh, – you know, he drew bad. He drew bad in a field that looks to me like there's going to be a lot of action. So, uh, you know, I know what what the game plan is, but we'll maybe have to see what happens when the gate folds. How and much fu- How much fun are you going to have today? <laughs> I, I have a good time here, you know, and like, you know. Uh, a lot of my family's here, and I get to hang out with them and shoot the breeze with them, and you know, and it's nice if you can win some races, you know. It just makes makes, and makes, Dave, makes for a good day. Almost a little less pressure today because you, you're not on any like big odds on favorite. No, no, but I mean, I still, I'm still looking to get to that winter circle. You always are, and that's why we love talking to you, and that's why we love watching you, Dave Miller, in the Hall of Fame for a reason. Hey, thanks so much for taking a couple of minutes. Enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in front of us. We're in our nice new grandstand set here, heading back into the winter circle where you belong. Have a great day, buddy. Thanks, okay. Dave. All, All right, right, guys. Dave thanks a lot. Miller, the all-time leading driver here at the Delaware County Fair. Race one pacers in Ohio Breeders Champ. Championship leg for over 62,000 ready to go. Here's Jason Settlemore with the call. Thanks, gang. The first strength, Ohio Breeders Championship First Division. Two year old Colton Gelding Pacers, sponsored by Post Printing. A field of six. Move it up and move it in. The gate swing to the top of the stretch, and here they come here in Delaware, Ohio to kick off Little Brown Jug Day. Field in motion. Banks out of the way. They're all fan pacing in the first race on Jug Day and laugh again. Hanover quick off the wings of the starting gate. Heart of Chewbacca up on the outside and looking to circle to take the lead here. Hill, yeah, come away. Racing in third. Caviar Sergeant is next there in fourth. Followed in fifth by Calvadell and sixth and trailing the field. Take a stand in and out of the turn and on to the back stretch we go. And up top, Heart of Chewbacca and Danny Noble dictating the fractions here. Leading it by a length and a quarter. Going to take him to the open quarter and 28 and 3 up into that far sweeping turn for the first time up top heart of Chewbacca Danny Noble with the lead by a length and a quarter laugh again Hanover and Dexter Dunn right there nose to helmet racing in two Hill yeah racing third a caviar sergeant races fourth followed in fifth by Calvin L and take a stand can still see them all straight alignment as they pass the stands for the first time heading on into the payoff half heart of Chewbacca gonna roll them into the payoff half halfway home 58 and one second panel and 29 and three second there from the inside and laugh again Hanover Hill yeah racing third caviar sergeant racing fourth along the inside fifth that's Calvin L sixth and trailing the field take a stand off the turn and driving down the backside heads are pointed towards three quarters and heart of Chewbacca and Danny Noble no anxious moments so far laugh again Hanover to the inside racing into Hill yeah yeah, still there in third. Caviar Sergeant first over on the rim in fourth. Three quarters and 126 flat. They're pacing the final turn and heading for home. Heart of Chewbacca is going to be set down up top, but laugh again. Hanover swinging off the rail as they turn for home. Less than a 16th to go here in Delaware, Ohio. And Heart of Chewbacca. Heart of Chewbacca is going to take this field gate to wire. Laugh again. Hanover to go second. Third was the three. Hill, yeah. Looked like Calvin L for fourth. Fifth there, Caviar, Sergeant and sixth and round out the field, take a stand time of the mile, 152 and two-fifths razor fast track here in Delaware, Ohio. I think Jason's right. That kind of gives us an idea of what we will be seeing throughout the afternoon in Heart of Chupaca, a uh, colt with an awful lot of speed. Talked about the track record he set up at your place here and uh, just didn't get much luck running into Charlie May in that final. Yeah, I mean, those two have kind of stuck out here towards the end of the year, and they finished 1-2 in the Sire Stakes final. When Heart of Chewbacca made the front 
what was the opening quarter, 28 and change. Uh, that was pretty much all she wrote. Came home uh, final quarter and what, 26 and change, I want to say. So uh, laugh again, Hanover, you know, even though he had the pocket trip, was not going to catch him off of that. Yeah, Dexter Dunn gave his, uh, gave his Colt every chance there and even, you know, loomed a little bit out of the pocket. But I think even in his mind, he knew they were sprinting so fast up front, it was going to be impossible to catch Mr. Noble. The Burke Brigade Colt, owned by Dennis Owens, Norman Ray Racing of Xenia, Ohio. Dennis from Hamilton, Ohio. That's win number five from only seven starts. That's a nice freshman campaign. And, you know, Danny and Chrissy were, were training this horse at first. She, he made a couple of breaks. They sent him out to Ronnie to train, and he has raced very well. Yeah, he recently added Lasix, too. I'm sure that's yep. uh, helping as well. 152-2 and two was the final time of the mile after that well-rated pace. You see the fans all over it, sending him off at 1-5. Uh, to five. Nowhere near uh, his lifetime mark, though. He's already paced in 51-1 and one, uh, up at Scioto. Yep. Starting him out with an easy one today. It's going to get a little little tougher after this. We started him out with a the, with the little uh, bunt. I think we all had 2-1 in the uh, handicapping selections, but we are not going to make any enough for dinner money uh, on this no, particular no. perfecta. I think the 50-cent perfecta might be paying about 55 cents. Yeah, they're going to give you a nickel. Hey, back to the winner's circle. The Sugar Valley Farms winner's circle for the first time today is Danny Noble in the heart of Chewbacca. Danny, I think we got one more coming to the winner's circle here. They just went to get her. Sugar Valley Farm Winner's Circle. Ohio Breeders Championship First Division. Two year old coat in gelding paints. It was a purse of $62,446. Sponsored by Post Printing. Timed at 152 and 2. A gate to wire effort here. The two heart of Chewbacca. Two year old black colt by Bring on the Beach out of a JT's Chewbacca. She by Four Star Shark, owned by Dennis Owens of Hamilton, Ohio, Norman Ray Racing LLC of Xenia, Ohio, tried by Ron Burke, Dan Noble does the driving. Seven starts, five wins, two seconds, 152 and two, and now you can take the picture, Brad. Mom has arrived. Heart of Chewbacca and Danny Noble, home a winner. Sugar Valley Farm Winner Circle 152 and 2 in the two heart of Chewbacca. Bred by good friends at Spring Haven Farm, Utica, Ohio. And there are your prices. Heart of Chewbacca, 240, 210, and 210. Laugh again, Hanover, 210 and 210. And Hill yeah, paid 260 to show. Your dollar perfect at 2-1 paid a buck fifty. <laughs> 50 cent try, 213, 260. The price are going to get higher than this. You know, yes, they will. The but, you know, yeah. it's always nice to start off the day with a winner. Yeah, easy one to start. All right, let's send things across the racetrack over to Mr. Jason Settlemore. He's at the top of the judges' stand, and he has the official order of finish from this Ohio Breeders' Championship. Ohio Breeders' Championship belongs to Heart of Chewbacca, returning 240, 210, 210. Second to one, and laugh again, Hanover returning 210, 210. Third to the three, Hill, yeah, 260. Dollar perfecta, two one, a dollar fifty, fifty cent try, two one three, two dollars sixty cents. Here's the rundown for the first strengths, the one laugh again, Hanover two. For the two, Heart of Chewbacca, the race winner, 152 and two. The three, Hill Yeah, three. The four, Caviar Sergeant, five. The five, Calvin L, four, and the six, take a stand, six. Recheck the rundown, top to bottom. It should read two one three, five, four, six on the bottom. Out of the mile, 152 and two fence. So we're rolling right along here on the 75th edition of Little Brown Jug Day. A field of seven to go post for the upcoming second race of the Buckeye Stallion Series two year old Colt and Gelding Pace. First division, win play show, perfecta, trifecta, superfecta wagering. Field of seven, there are no changes. This time, let's throw it downstairs to. One of my favorite girls in all the harness racing. Here's Wendy Ross. Wendy. Thank you very much, Jason. Uh, what a nice way to kick off Jug Day here with driver Danny Noble. Danny, a couple things happened today. This talented colt of yours picked up his fifth win on the year in only seven starts. But you moved up to the fourth all-time leading driver here at Delaware. How's that feel? 
It feels great, Wendy. You're just going to keep on going, though, right? You're going to move up to third. That's the plan, right? That's the plan. So this colt here, an interesting story, a little side note. You had this colt. You broke him. You had him. But you said, we weren't really getting along with him, so you gave him to trainer Ronnie Burke, and he kind of, uh, you know, it's been ancient history from there, right? Yeah, it's been quite an education, and Ronnie's done a great job with this colt. Uh, I, I couldn't uh, thank him enough. The colt looked like a true professional today. Now, I don't know about you, but I was watching the race. I saw that red-hot Dexter Dunn sitting right on your back with a co-favorite, but you didn't seem nervous at all. You knew you had the, the colt to beat, right? Yeah, you know, the, the colt felt better today than he did in the final, and, and uh, I believe he was a little sick that day, and today he was uh, on his game. Danny, congratulations. You had your mom in the winner's circle. Are we going to see that cute baby boy today? Yes, he should be here in about another 30 minutes. All right, Danny, congratulations. Thanks. Winning driver, Danny Noble. Harness racing is such a family affair, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, and that'll yeah. be a fun. That'll be a fun moment because uh, I've been told. Uh, little Birdie told me that Danny's been willing to show uh, pictures of uh, Young Nash to anyone who is willing to listen, and he's got hundreds of them, I think, in that phone. <laughs> and the, the fair week, a lot of people bring their families. Uh, they do. Yeah. They do. All right, our first time out of the day. Coming up next, we are underway on Little Brown Jug Day, where Heart of Chewbacca has made the favorite players happy. Dave and I will be right back after this. Today, the world looks a little different. Between face masks and no in-person events, it seems like we're missing out on everything. Even the little brown jug. We might not be along the track cheering, but the horses are still off and pacing. And Absolute Impressions, the company you have trusted for your brown jug merchandise, has your 2020 commemorative apparel. So no matter where you are, you can place your order from your mobile device or computer. Go to littlebrownjug.com and purchase jug history. Bow River has been designing Little Brown Jug jewelry for over a quarter of a century. Go to bowriverjewelry.com to see our limited edition 75th anniversary Little Brown Jug pin and 50th anniversary jugette pin under the Little Brown Jug tab. Browse our standard bread collection, equestrian collection, and our expanded equestrian bridal collection. BowRiverJewelry.com, original designs and quality you can trust. With more than 300,000 horses in Ohio, the economic impact of the equine industry in the state is over $2.8 billion. Much of that value comes from standard bred horse owners, breeders, trainers, and drivers who participate in the sport of harness racing. The mission of the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association is to preserve, protect, promote, and serve the entire standard bred industry in Ohio and beyond. To learn more about the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association, go to OHHA.com. That's OHHA.com. Sugar Valley Farm in Delaware, Ohio, is proud to be a part of the sports rejuvenation in the Buckeye State. Dedicated to providing the best stallions available at any price point, Lather Up, who equaled the all-time record of 146, joins world champion Down by the Seaside. 2009 Pacer of the Year, well said. Mr. Wiggles, sire of 2015 Horse of the Year, Wiggle It, Jiggle It. And $2 million winning trotter, Creatine. For more, log on to SugarValleyFarmStallions.com. And we welcome you back to continuing live coverage from the Delaware County Fair. Coming up a little bit later on in early evening, the 75th edition of the Greatest American Harness Race, the Little Brown Jug. Up next, race two uh, to get, complete the uh, early daily double, the Buckeye Stallion Series Division for two-year-old Colt and Pacers. A couple of shout-outs right off the bat to Sharon McDonald. Uh, she's looking for a way to watch up in Ontario, Canada. So we pointed her to the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association Facebook page. Hopefully she's a Facebook person. Now, here's here's a question that I don't know the answer to. And this comes from Matthew Richard, watching again from PRM. So I'm assuming that Prairie Meadows, maybe. What is the origination for the Little Brown Jug Trophy? Do you know that? You don't know that. I do not know that. I don't know that. Do you no. don't know that? Oh, I You're... don't know. But that's good. If anyone so does, send I, it in. I retweeted with, quote, yeah. Yeah. Does anybody know? Good, so, you know, I'll, hopefully I won't miss that answer uh, when it comes in. And again, Roger probably does. We, we, uh, it, we, yeah, we can wait for Roger. He'll know that too. That's a good point, Drew. 
Um, again, we encourage everybody to get in touch with us uh, throughout the afternoon, and there are so many ways to do it. On Twitter, I am at EE Doogie. Wendy is at Wire to Wire Wendy. You can email me at dbrower at playmeadowlands.com, or you can reach out on Facebook, or if you happen to have my phone number, you can send me a text. I'll get to them eventually. We love the interaction with the fans. Give us your best bet. Give us a good betting story. Tell us about your favorite jug memory, because we want to all reminisce a little without uh, the fans here this afternoon. So feel free to uh, reach out. If I don't answer, send it again, because sometimes the uh, in queue gets uh, uh, a little bit clogged. Well, one underway, uh, guys. Uh, early impressions. It looks like it's getting a little bit sunnier out there and meet right off the bat. Yeah, uh, it's going to heat up, it looks like. I think it is. Oh, there's the bugle. Race two. Seven pacers about to step onto the track for this Buckeye Stallion Series division. The two-year-old Colts and Geldings. Stepping to the track for the second race, Buckeye Stallion Series. First division, two-year-old Colton Gelding Pace at one mile, a purse of $17,500. Offering win play show, Perfecta Trifecta Superfecta wagering, a field of seven. There are no changes. Being led to the post by the one, Rockin' in My Shoe, Rock in My Shoe, owned by Julie Farley of Bradford, Ohio, trained by Mike Paul Hamas, Chris Page. The two is Richard Kopp of Hillsdale, Michigan's Imagine It, trained by Kent Wilcox, Tim Tietrich. Brett Miller drives the three, third edition for James Belyasak of Broadview Heights, Ohio, trained by Steve Carter. The four is Hutchinson Harness LLC of North Ridgeville, Ohio's Big Money Mike, trained by Brian Brown with Ronnie Wren Jr. The five is Rocket Airway by Miller Racing Stable. Gilbert, amazing racing. And Gilbert, they're all with the Buckeye State, trained by Ryan Miller with King Kaufman. For the six, he's a Dickens by Elliot Mishula, Manchester, New Hampshire, trained by Chris Hinkliff with the Buckeye, David Miller. In the seven, speak well by L&L Stables of Springfield, Ohio, and William Hart of Carmel, Maine, trained by Clarence Folt, Dexter Dunn in the sulky. That's the field for the second race. The first division in the Buckeye Stallion Series. Two-year-old Colt and Gelding Pace at one mile. I first to $17,500. Offering win play show. Perfecta, trifecta, superfecta, wagering. Field of seven. No changes. Good luck, everyone. Thank you, Jason. And we go from one Ohio guy in the first race uh, interview, uh, David Miller, and we're going to grab another Ohio guy uh, suited up with the headset in the back paddock, Mr. Ryan Stahl. First of all, let me apologize to you for the uh, technical difficulties yesterday. You were a trooper back there. You were ready to go. I think we've got you all set up and ready today. It's been a really good little brown jug week for you so far. Yep. Uh, no complaints. Um win a couple Monday and come back Tuesday and win a couple. Yesterday not so good, only had a couple in and couldn't keep them trotting, so hopefully today works out a little better. Well, you're not exactly a super busy guy today. You've only got three assignments, and we've already seen one of them uh, go through, but you'll uh, come up and race 11-12. I'll talk uh, about those horses in just a second, but please tell me all about designer specs, because we were all so flabbergasted with her amazing performance the other day. She did not look like a two-year-old to me. She looked like a seasoned, aged trotting mare. Yeah, she uh, maturity-wise, she's well above her age. Um, Last week, uh, Upper Sandusky Fair was the first week uh, I, I drove her, and Jay and Louise, the owner and trainer, asked me if I'd come over there to drive her to get a feel of her for there and here before the fair final, and uh, it was pretty tough to pass that down. I would imagine. I would think I would travel anywhere for her. We've seen that before. When was the first time you got to sit behind her, and, you know, any of the braking or training uh, down? No, I never seen her, actually, until Summit County Fair this summer. Uh, Jay drove her himself and uh she really looked the part i mean just a big strong filly and uh just uh real nice and last week was the first time i'd sat behind her hey ryan obviously we host the fair final at northfield on uh saturday night october 10th does that designer specs have any races between now and then uh no um i think that's the plan she's going there next and you know this year obviously they staked here pretty you know conservatively do you think they look for bigger things next year you know sire stakes 
I haven't talked to him, but I would have to think that he would stake her a lot more heavy next year after her showings this year. What was that phone call like when they asked you to go to the Upper Sandusky uh, Fair the first time? Did you have any idea what you were uh, going to be sitting behind? Yeah, I did. Um, actually, they they had a couple horses racing at Northfield that I drove, TC's Happy Time and stuff, so they asked me one night when I was up there. And, uh, but yeah, like I said, Jay and Louise, they live a mile down the road from me. So I always keep, keep an eye on them and, um, they've done really extremely well the last few years. Well, that's awesome because we do like to keep it local and I'm glad they gave you the assignment. I'm sure you are too. Oh, absolutely. All right. Coming up a little bit later on today, actually, it's part of the, uh, one of the guaranteed pick fours today. You're going to sit behind, uh, uh, PJ's legacy for trainer, Brian Brown. How often do you get to drive for Brian? Um, I usually get a couple every year for them. Um, I know a lot of the owners uh, start with Chris and Ronnie on them, and as they uh, go through the summer and choose theirs, um, I've been fortunate to pick some up and had a lot of luck with them over the last few years. Now, you had the seat from the rail up at Scioto in that $300,000 OSS final, and things did not go your way. Tell us what happened. No, I mean, uh, they went real soft fraction. She she has a um, tendency to flip her pallet and nothing that bad, but got away third behind the two heavy favorites, and um, and she wasn't that grabby going to the half, but as soon as Brett come first up, well, then, it, then it, she just flipped the light switch and just got all rammy, and she choked real bad. And it, it was to the point I thought she might, you know, fall down, but luckily... We got across the wire. Yeah, we don't want any falling down uh, in any race uh, and any track in any situation. So should we be watching you in the score down today just to see whether she's relaxed or not? Yeah, I mean, she never 100% relaxed, but hopefully, um, yeah, we're not going to try to get herself in that situation again. Game plan from post six? Um, like I say, I think we got to go forward and see how it plays out. Um, because I don't, she's not going to relax going straight back off the gate. Okay, we will uh, pay attention to that. One race later is your final assignment on the card. You got a bigger long shot, number five, KB Mack. You do have experience behind this gelding, though. You drove him up at Urbana. Yeah, I actually drove him the first couple, first two legs of that in, uh, in the Buckeye and win both legs. Then at Urbana, got trapped in. He's been really good. I know. He's been fighting a virus, and Dan's drove him himself the last few weeks, so hopefully uh, hopefully he's got his A game. How does that conversation go when he hands you the lines here? Is he going to tell you he had a good week or he had a bad week, or what, what do you what do you think you're going to hear? Um, yeah, I mean, he's going to tell me one way or the other how he's feeling, but um, he leaves it up to me for to make the decisions out on the track. Ryan, of course, you grew up in a harness racing family. Your dad, great Ohio horseman, uh, Lee Stahl. Did you used to come to the jug as a kid, too? Uh, not too much. Um, we'd come down and race during the week, but uh, my father, he was no big crowd guy, so <laughs> he wanted to get home as soon as possible. How weird is it this year for you when you drove in that gate off Route 23 here? No fans, no campers, you know, just very limited stuff. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a par for course for this year. I mean, everything's a lot different, but it almost just feels like the matinee they have here every spring. How did you handle personally the uh, shutdown there? I know you guys are uh, used to racing sometimes multiple tracks in the same day, but you had three months of nothing to do. Yeah, it was definitely a lot different. Um, for years, I mean, we'd race at Northfield four or five nights a week and always trained in the morning. And to have three months, I mean, I was able to get a lot of stuff done on the farm. But uh, <laughs> I've heard that from other people. Yeah, right. everybody's fences are mended. <laughs> <laughs> the grass is mowed, the fences are mended. Yeah. Hey, listen, thanks very much, Ryan. Again, I'm glad we got to talk to you here. Have a great rest of uh, Little Brown Jug Day, and we'll see you up the road. Appreciate it. All thanks, right, guys. Ryan Stahl, ladies and gentlemen, thanks uh, again to him for the uh, time. We love to hear from the Ohio guys, especially on this circuit, and Ryan's one of the good ones. Yeah, I mean, he grinds out a very good living, and he doesn't get the call Aaron and Ronnie do, but, I mean, he still is a driver and trainer, does quite well. All right, good for him, and we hope that continues. Race two, we're going to complete that uh, early daily double here, the Buckeye Stallion Series two-year-old Colt Pacers. They're going for $17,500. Buckeye Stallion Series, First Division, two-year-old Colt and Gelding Pacers. Field of seven. Move it up and move it in. The gate swing to the top of the stretch here at the Delaware County Fair. Here they come. They're off 
fan pacing and firing away from the middle of the track. There goes Imagine It getting the first call from the inside. Rock in my shoe. Three high to join the fray. Big Money Mike looks to angle to the pylons in third. Off the turn and traveling down the backside. Third edition has come away in fourth. Fifth there. That's Rock and Airway followed by the two trailers. He's a Dickens and Speak Well. As they roll down the backside, Imagine It finally clear to the front and off stride on a bad break went the one Rock in my shoe. The opening quarter was really quick. 26 and 4 fifths. Into that far sweeping turn for the first time at up top of the lead here. Imagine it. Imagine it by a length and a quarter. Big Money Mike will now be in the garden spot racing into third edition as they're in third. Fourth, that's Rockin' Airway and Kane Kaufman half in, half out. Passing the stand for the first time. Heading on over to the half. Outside racing in fifth. Speak well was underway. Sixth and pinned in. He's a Dickens in seventh and trailing the field. Back down pacing here. Rockin' my shoe. Halfway home, 57 seconds flat. An easy second quarter there, a 30 and one fifth as they roll into the payoff half and up top. Imagine it, and Timmy T leads the way here by a length and a quarter. First over on the rim, Rockin' Air wears their second. Locked in and third, Big Money Mike. Fourth and move to the outside to catch that cover. Second over on the outside and fourth. Third edition, fifth, that's He's a Dick. And sixth to the outside, Speak Well. And seventh and trailing, Rockin' My Shoe. Three quarters and 125 flat. A third panel there in 28 seconds from the inside. Imagine it looks to have fought off Rockin' Airway, but now sent up on the outside. Rockin' Airway is still coming to him, and now sent three high on the outside. Third edition looking for racing room. Big Money Mike with less than a 16th to go, and they're on the way home in Delaware, Ohio. Imagine it set down up top. Rockin' Airway on the outside. Here's third edition coming to the wire. Imagine it on to win it. Third edition to go second. Rockin' Airway was third. Fourth to round out the super there. Looked like the four. Big money, Mike. Time of the mile, 154, one fifth. Well, we knew he was going to get to the winner's circle here sometimes. Eventually. Yes. Yeah, Tim Tietrich, the bionic man here. And uh, I guess, you know, it's simply put, whenever you can get him, Dave, you might as well put him down. Yeah, so that was uh interesting opening panel there. I'm not sure what happened. There's quite a speed duel and when he cleared, the horse behind him broke. We're going to take a closer look at that. Heading to the quarter, a bit of a speed duel here between Imagine It and Rock in My Shoe. Chris is scissoring right there. Yeah. And he hits a pylon, so maybe that may have spooked the horse a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Oh, now he's trying to, yeah, yeah. Oh, and there he goes. Yep. So, you know, I'm no judge. It didn't look like the management had anything to do with that, but I'm sure the judges might have some other angles, too. And, and that's what announcer Jason Settlemore is saying right now. There will be a, an inquiry here. But as we pick it up on the last turn, it doesn't exactly look like Imagine It is home free. But Tim kind of fooled us a little bit. He saved a little something in uh, for the stretch. In behind Big yes. Money Mike's going to get locked in for Ronnie Wren. No chance to ever get out. And a, a decent three-wide sweep from third edition. He's going to come up just a little, little bit short. They hit the wire, eh, about a half a length, two, three, five, and four. Final time there, 154 and one. We'll uh, give number two, imagine it, a new lifetime mark if it goes official. And it'll also give him, Dave, his 10th win from just 13 lifetime starts. That's wow. pretty darn good. Yeah, I haven't seen much of this horse. He's been in some southern fair circuits, but he raced very well today. He did. Good speed horse. This guy, he's had a few... Uh, drivers as well. We could have asked mm -hmm. Ryan Stahl about him. He uh, sat behind the uh, gelding by If I Can Dream a couple of times. Okay. Uh, Look at Kent Wilcox. He's I, batting about uh, wow. 700 now this year. Yeah, <laughs> do you guys good. see, you know, two things, a couple things I want to talk about. We see the patch on Timmy's leg, the Ernest Benz. That's mm -hmm. the watch company that teacher Racing is involved in, and they are actually involved in um, rehab, horse rehab, and towards new vocations and things like that. So that's a cool thing that teacher Gracing is one of the many things that they're involved and in. But that's what Ernest Benz is on his leg. And it wouldn't be Timmy Tietrich unless he had his own custom-made mask. We're about to see that. I won't give it away. There it is. And when he... Uh when he gets ready for the winner's circle, you'll see how, what it says. So back to the winner's circle. For the first time, this uh, two, Delaware three, County five, Fair is four, Imagine It two, and three, the Bionic five, Man. Four, unofficial. Two, three, five, four, unofficial. Track side of the Sugar Valley Farm winner's circle. Well, the unofficial winner of the second race, first division of the Buckeye Stallion Series, two-year-old Colt in Gelding Pace. At one mile, a purse of $17,500. In a new lifetime mark, a 154 and one, the two Imagine It. A two-year-old Bay Gelding by... If I Can Dream, out of a caddy sure shot, she by Gun That Won the West, owned by Richard Kopp of Hillsdale, Michigan, trained by Kent Wilcox. Nicely handled here this afternoon. 
by Hall of Famer Tim Dietrich. This two Imagine It is a homebred, bred by Richard Kopp as well of Michigan. Imagine It and Hall of Famer Timmy T. All right, you saw that uh, custom made green mask, the Bionic Man. Why not? I think he wears that uh, down at Harris Philly and uh, Meadowlands when he uh, comes up for uh, drives as well. All right. Well, that's good to hear. 2354 is now an official result. So we'll have the prices for you in just a second. And there they are. Number two, imagine it. 360, $3, 210. Three third edition, twenty dollars and five eighty. The five rock and airway two forty. Your one dollar perfecta, fifty seven dollars. Your fifty cent try and fifty cent super. The super gets you back three hundred twenty six dollars and forty five cents. And we will wait for them to put the other payoffs back up. There's that fifty cent try, one twenty three ten. And yeah, that was a popular daily double payoff. The one dollar payoff uh, is three dollars even. Jason has the rundown. The two Imagine It returning for $63, dollars two ten. Second, the three, third edition returning $20 even, five eighty. dollars Third of the five, Rock and Airway, two forty. Fifty cent super, we'll get back to it. A dollar perfecta, two three, fifty seven dollars even. Fifty cent try, two three five, one hundred and twenty three dollars ten cents. And the early double, a dollar double, two two, three dollars even. Fifty cent super, two three five four, three hundred twenty six dollars forty five cents. Here's the rundown for that second race, the Buckeye Stallion Series, the one rocking my shoes. Seven, the two imagine it, the race winner, timed at one fifty four and one, a new lifetime mark. The three, third edition, two, the four, Big Money Mike, four, the five, Rocket Airway, three, the six, He's a Dickens, five, and the seven, Speak Well, six. Recheck the rundown, top to bottom, it should read, seven, one, two, four, three, five, six on the bottom. Well, the up Thank you very much, Jason. Uh, there is that uh, photo finish for the uh, second spot, and uh, we're ready for another time out here. There's uh, the most famous building in all of harness racing, ladies and gentlemen, a view of the second floor deck of the log cabin. Big thanks to Arch Glenn and his wife, Jeannie, who supplied us with some nice home-baked goods. Uh, the guys in the TV truck say thank you very much, and so do we. We hope you are enjoying little brown jug coverage. We'll be right back in a minute. For your horse, one name stands out Big D's. Since 1974, Big D's Tack and Vet Supply has been the equine experts you can trust. Whatever your horse needs is available at Big D's Tack and Vet Supply. Visit the retail outlet in Streetsboro, Ohio, or order online at bigdweb.com. Most orders ship that day, or call 1 800 321 2142. Big D's Tack and Vet Supply. And we're back, everybody. One of the most yeah. asked questions I have had over the past few weeks is how am I going to bet the little brown jug? Well, the good folks at Express Bet will open up an account for you in just a couple of moments there. Uh, Express Bet, one of the ADWs, advanced deposit wagering uh, companies that uh, can help you out, and they are one of the best uh, by reputation. So we thank Express Bet as we peer out at our empty tote board without any numbers, without any uh, names and numbers, and uh, that's just one of the things that we've had yeah. to deal with, Dave. If you're going to blow up the tote board this week, it's going to have to be with dynamite <laughs> because uh, <laughs> it's not even plugged in, I don't think. Yeah, we are relying upon our monitors uh, as well for all of the graphical information, and we thank the guys in the truck for uh, keeping us uh, always on our toes. Up next, we continue our role of Ohio Breeders' Championships. Race number three kicks off our first of four pick threes this afternoon. Four pick fours, I believe. Pick fours, I'm yep. sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. pick fours. Races three, four, five, and six. This one is for the three-year-old Philly Pacers, and we've got a very competitive bunch of six. I thought this was one of the tougher races uh, of the day to handicap. For a short field, yeah, this is wide open. I think you three picked three different horses, uh, you, Roger, and Wendy. Was that the only time we did it all day? 19 may, races? May have been. I know. Leave it to me to go with the three to five by, shot. By the way, <laughs> okay. by the way, did you notice the trepidation in Roger's voice when he was discussing uh, the handicapping standings? He knows he's in trouble today. I you, think who's does. taking it? You? You have the lead. Wait, you? I missed all this? Yeah, you yeah, were the most winners yesterday. Whoa, not, no, you no, were no. in the jug barn. Here's the thing. 
It's not just me. It's me and Barry Vickroy. We're the dynamic that, well, duo. Well, that's okay. We've, we've now turned that over to you at this point, and you wow. held your own. You had more winners yesterday than anybody. I think you had like 12. Can you say that a little louder for the people in the back, please? 12 <laughs> winners. 12 winners, a nice even dozen. And uh, I think we're, you know, we're a winner or two ahead uh, of Roger. So uh, we'll see how the day wow, progresses. Okay. I, you know, I don't, I, I don't ever really want to try and beat him because I think he'll never talk to me again. Well, here's the thing. I was so busy yesterday with the interviews. I really didn't kind of keep track, so I'm, I'm glad somebody is. And then I didn't hear the, you know, I was over there doing the thing, so I, I didn't hear it. So, wow, that's cool. Yeah, if you guys want to keep this job, I've been here 25 years. <laughs> if you're beating Roger, jug day all eight holes. Just pick all eight holes. Oh, yeah, that's probably very good in uh, Sage yeah. advice. Speaking of interviews, Wendy, as they're about to step onto the track here for race three, how, who, how many do you have lined up today? How many winners? Oh, well, there's, uh, you know. I, so many stakes. Yeah, it's just every every really big race, so probably okay. 10 or 12. All right, good. You will be busy, and I'm glad to see you're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed after running out there today. On the track, race three. Leaving the paddock for the third race. Ohio Breeders Championship First Division. Sophomore pacing fillies at one mile, a purse of $46,021. Sponsored by the stable.ca. Win play show, perfecta trifecta, pick four, wagering field of six. No changes being led to the post by the one crown time rocket. Owned in partnership by Burke Racing Stable. Schumacher Jr., Weaver Brasemi, and Carr. They're of New Jersey, Pennsylvania. In Indiana, trained by Ron Burke, Chris Page. Timmy T. Trick drives the two beautiful beach for Tom Laban of Sarasota, Florida. Holly Heiser of Dalesville, Indiana, trained by Tyler George. The three is odds on racing of Boca Raton, Florida's odds on Greenville, trained by Melody Wren. Peter Wren is up. The four is Carol Jean Noble of Cedarville, Ohio. Sarah's surprise, trained by Dan Ader, Kyle Ader at the lines. The five is Mick Markle Sparkle by Laura and Paul Baker of Galloway, Ohio, trained by Jim Artledge Jr. Brett Miller. And the six, Boundless Dragon, owned by Emerald Highlands Farm of Mount Vernon, Ohio, trained by Kelly O. Kelly O'Donnell. Ronnie Wren Jr. is inner sulky. That's the field for the third race, Ohio Breeders Championship, first division. Three-year-old pacing fillies, $46,021 is on the line. Win play show, perfecta trifecta, pick four wagering. Sponsored by the stable.ca. Third race, no changes. Fourth race, second leg of that pick four, no changes. Fifth race, third leg of the pick four is where you'll find the only change in the pick four. Races three, four, five, and six. In that fifth race, the one, Mick Matters, make the driver, Mike Wilder. 5-1, McMatters, Mike Wilder. Sixth is clear. Good luck, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Jason. On we roll. We've got another special guest uh, mic'd up in the back paddock, and it's a guy that uh, I got to get to know a little bit out of town, outside of Ohio. It's driver Tyler Smith. Tyler, how's your little brown jug week going so far? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's going very good. Looking over your drives uh, if today, it seems like you've got an awful lot of power. We'll talk uh, about some of those uh, in just a minute. But uh, other than that, when was the first time you were able to sit in the sulky seat around here? I know you were very young. Yeah, I think I started warming up horses when I was like 14, you know, and then I got the opportunity when I was 16 to start driving. And, you know, Delaware is where everybody wants to be. I know. you got to feel extra special when you drive through uh, that gate here. But this year, you know, maybe a little different. What, what were your feelings when you pulled in for the first time? Yeah, you know, I was at Lexington on Sunday for the final, and I seen everybody put how weird it was. And when I pulled in here on Monday, it was weird. Um, <laughs> it felt like we was back here qualifying babies. <laughs> well, yeah, that was uh, right after it we were all allowed to uh, get back to action, I guess, so to speak. How did you handle the shutdown? Uh, not very good. <laughs> you know, probably about the first three days, I was like, ah, okay. You know, I got to spend a lot of time with my daughter, though. And But, you know, I'm glad to be back working. And, you know, then three months with no pay, I, I don't like that. Oh, boy, yeah. We, we dip into the savings account and the credit cards when that happens. Let me ask you about a couple of these horses because they're all uh, very short prices today. Hopefully we'll see you in the winner's circle. In that sixth race, you've got Hoochie Girl uh, in that Buckeye Stallion series. But that is a tough post. Yeah, you know, I drove her last week at the fair at Dayton my first time, and, you know, she really impressed me. She went by a good mare in Tyler George's mare, and 
pace right through the wire, you know, and I'm not real worried about the outside post. She's got wicked gay speed. Um, you know, I'm definitely going to be using that. And I, I, you know, I hopefully I can make the lead in the first turn and have the ball in my court. Well, don't tell everybody too much about your strategy. They might be listening. <laughs> That's hey, true. Yeah, I know. One race later, you've got a little longer price with Snow Moon at 6-1 to one in the morning line. But uh, the Gelding's got eight wins. Yeah, you know, it's definitely a step-up class from the Stallion Series. He just raced here the other day, and he really did race good. You know, got stuck first over. Um, you know, it was kind of a tough call between him and Canby Perfect. I've been driving Canby Perfect all year, but that Snow Moon horse has some um, the Stallion final and the Fair final and stuff coming up, so I stuck with him. But, you know, he's done nothing wrong. I mean, it's definitely a step up in class today, better horses. But, you know, like I said, he's done nothing wrong. In the eighth, you've got Narina Hanover. You've driven her before, but not since uh, the middle of August here. You did win with her a couple of times. Yeah, very, very, very fast, Mayor. You know, I, I know she made a break at a fair, but I, I watched the replay because I have it on uh, OHHN. It just looked like she took a bad step. A very fast mare, very versatile, can do it anyway. Um, I, I really like her. And I'll ask you about one more, then I'll, uh, I'll get into something somewhat controversial. Pen, paper, page. You got the perfect trip there. That had to be a huge win in that Sire Stakes final. Yeah, you know, that was very, very special for mom and dad. And, you know, after everything dad went through so you know to do it for them and it was just you know very very special um you know i thought the mayor was the best all year long she got some sickness and you know dad had her very good on final night and what's with you and barry vicroy barry keeps telling me that your younger brother trevor is the more talented driver you gotta hate to hear that oh no it's fine you know i, I mess with barry all the time but oh yeah he doing something at Dayton right now where he's got the king hat on Trevor, you know. <laughs> so I text him. I text him while I'm leaving Lexington the other day when he was commentating. I said, hey, I was like, if you come back, you better get advice from Gabe because I said, it's boring ride home listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> now that's how you fire back. That's my boy. All right. Wendy, what do you got? Well, I was just thinking how, you know, how good of a year Trevor's having. And you're happy for him, of course. Right? Yeah, for, yeah, very good, you know, especially just starting out, you know, and he's finally getting a lot more work, and, you know, he's taking full advantage of it. And I remember back when I used to work in the paddock doing Heather Wilder's job that she does now, how w the first time I actually put the headset on you, what, we, you and I were joking about it the other day. How old were you? Were you 18 or 19 when Sam was? Remember when we first interviewed you? How, how long ago was that, six, uh, seven years? Yeah, a very long time ago. Um, you know, that's what, yeah, when Sam was back here and stuff, yeah, it was very, probably, probably seven or eight so years. Because you're so old. Could yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, him and I were, when I was out riding Toyota there late, you know, in the month there, last month, he were out there, you know, just, just lollygagging in this seven, eight minute drag that we seem to have to be in there, right? And we were there and uh, you and I were just getting these conversations and we're like just talking and talking about aimlessly. And if you see Tyler out there, he's always talking to the outriders. Mm -hmm. He just has a great time out there, huh? It's fun. Yeah, you know, especially as long as Gabe's got us out there anymore, we're out there forever. So you get kind of, <laughs> yeah. We're not see, allowed I talking just, on I the track, so. I did an, uh, I did that darn Scioto drag. That darn Scioto drag is yeah, way too I long. Know. He's taking ah, after you, ah, Dave. Ah, ah, well, really, that's what we learned from. I didn't really <laughs> accuse anyone. I just said the time amount. I didn't really point fingers at anyone. Tyler, you did that, though. That's not on me. Gabe, not on me. <laughs> oh, he gives me crap all the time because I give it right back to him. Yeah, exactly. That's what you're supposed to do. Go ahead, Dave. I just want to say, uh, remember, Ty, real quickly, remember when you were uh, commuting between Cal Expo and Northfield that one winter? That was quite an experience, too. Oh, yeah, I love Cal Expo. I wish um, I wish I'd have stayed actually a little longer. You know, I got to meet some great guys like you, Gary Seibel. It's funny. I was on a plane, my connecting flight to um, California, and I seen Gary Seibel with the program right there, and I'm like, <laughs> I better sit beside this guy. I didn't know him, and that's how we become great friends after that. He's he, a great guy. He, he tells that story a lot, and I'm <laughs> glad I'm glad we got to have a little bit of fun and watch you perform out there because you adapted to the mile track like you'd driven it your whole life. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, it was very, very, very fun out there. All right, Tyler, listen, uh, we got to let you go. The uh, third race horses are behind the gate. Thanks again for being with us. Hey, win a couple of these races today on these uh, low-price horses, will you? That sounds good. Thanks, guys. All right, Tyler Smith, uh, Thanks, ladies Tyler. and gentlemen. Glad to talk to him. Always a breath of fresh air. Third race, Ohio Breeders Championship. Three-year-old Philly Pacers are on gate. Kicking off a pick four, sponsored by the Stable.ca. Field of six, moving up and moving in. Wepkenberg starting gate, swing to the top of the stretch, and here they come in Delaware, Ohio. 
This field is being sent on their way. They're all fan pacing and firing away from the outside. There goes McMarkle Sparkle, who's placed on the go. Crown Time Rocket is rocking it from the inside. A gap of a length and a half and third. That's Beautiful Beach. Followed in fourth by Odds On Greenville. Fifth there. That's Sarah's Surprise. And sixth and trailing Boundless Dragon. And Ronnie Wren Jr. can see them all as they pace towards the opening quarter. Being led up top by McMarkle Sparkle. Leading it here by a length and a half. The opening quarter was quick 26 and 4 fifth into that far sweeping turn for the first time here at the Delaware County Fair and up top McMarkle Sparkle and Brett Miller dictating the fractions leading it by a length and a quarter crown time rocket is right there nose to helmet as they pass the stand for the first time and head on over to the half beautiful beach and Tim Dietrich half in half out racing him third fourth there that's odds on Greenville move to the outside in fifth Sarah's surprise is underway and second over the outside flagging that cover and six is Boundless Dragon. They were halfway home, 56 seconds flat. Rolling into the payoff half and up top, McMarkle Sparkle leads the way here by a length and a quarter. First over on the outside, racing in two. That's Beautiful Beach is first up now. That pinned in, racing in third. That's Crown Time Rocket. Down the back side of the go, nearing the three-quarter mile mark of the race. Second over on the outside, racing in fourth. Sarah's Surprise. Pinned in in fifth. Odds on Greenville in sixth and third over and last. That's Boundless Dragon. Three quarters and one 23 and 4 fifth. They'll pace the final turn and head for home. And McMarkle Sparkle has been there every step of the way. Crown Time Rocket is desperately looking for racing room here as they turn for home. Less than a 16th to go, and they're on their way home in Delaware, Ohio. McMarkle Sparkle from the inside. Crown Time Rocket's got the room and comes to the outside. McMarkle Sparkle, Crown Time Rocket. These two hit the wire together. Photo for a win. Can't split them, input them. 152 and 3 dead tight that was a tight All one. Right. Yes. You two who won. Call the photo for me. I'm always wrong, as I said, always say this, but I'm thinking Brett Miller. I am, I got 5-1. That's what I I, I okay. think it was 5-1 as well. Our best finish of the day, though. Chris Page, if he could have gotten out maybe one step sooner, he probably would have gotten there. And those are so aggravating for drivers. When you yeah. think you're going to get there, you surge and you just miss. In the early part of the action, though, Brett Miller took charge with the uh, Jim Arledge trainee, Mick Markle Sparkle. Going to get a little pressure. Uh, from Beautiful Beach uh, on the outside and the bionic man here. But the way Brett Miller looks in the sulky right now, he, he seems like he's very comfortable. Yeah, definitely. This horse raced a, a big mile at the right time going in here in the in the Breeders' Championship. And I thought Chris might have her measured here at the top of the lane, but very short stretch here and no passing lane. So you, yeah. you don't have much time to make up ground. Brett Miller, of course, you see what I'm hooting and hollering. Now he's asking uh, his filly for best. And I think she's just going to hold on here. Let's see. He's reaching, pushing. Well, I don't know. That's another tight one. Sometimes we get these photos wrong. I think we had one wrong yesterday. So let's wait yeah. for Jason to tell us uh, who was the official winner. Dead tight at the wire between number five, McMarkle Sparkle, and number one, Crown Time Rock at final time of the mile was 152 and three. So and it there was it is. McMarkle Sparkle. All right. Two to one, over four to five, over 34 to one, over 24 to one. Good way to kick off the uh, pick four. Uh, our first of the day there. And Brett Miller giving some high fives. That was Jim Marlitz Jr. there, I think, uh, the recipient of the high five. Brett Miller, he's been doing this a long time. And yeah. sometimes when you win by one inch, it's not... Uh, you know, it, it, it's not a fluke. Dave, it's not the only Miller to win a lot of races. Your <laughs> old cousin Brett does okay, too. Yeah, what, what was my, my stat from uh, Bob Hayden yesterday? We had five Millers, I think, uh, in the little brown and, jug. And not, in the jug at. And not all related, either. No, no. Uh, and sometimes even I get confused on the mm -hmm. relationships uh, there as well. Well, there's Brett Miller. And I, I tell you what, I don't think he had that mask on yesterday. So maybe he's debuting a fresh mask uh, uh, each and every day. But one yeah. thing's for sure, we know he knows his way back to the uh, Sugar Valley Farms Winter Circle here in Delaware, Ohio. And some winning connections. Looks like they're about to uh, cross the track to uh, take their picture. And that makes me happy. Brett Miller to the Winter Circle with McMarkle Sparkle. Winning never gets old. The photo finish. The photo was revealed. Brett Miller started pumping his fists back there. We can all see it on TV. And the five, McMarkle Sparkle, returning to the Sugar Valley Farm winner's circle. 
the unofficial winner of the Ohio Breeders' Championship for sophomore pacing fillies, $46,021, sponsored by thestable.ca. Posting the second win in 2020, the sixth win of her career, the five McMarkle Sparkle. A 3 0 Brown Philly by McCardle out of a It's Ladies Night. She counters Big Guy by Laura and Paul Baker of Galloway, Ohio. Trained by Jim Artledge Jr. Jim Artledge Jr. will remind everyone how serious COVID is. As Jimmy is now fully recovered and standing here in the winner's circle in Delo, Ohio. As he wins the Ohio Free. All right, Jason, thank you very much. And there is the photo finish. And it's a good, solid nose that uh, McMarkle yep. Sparkle uh, holds on by. I'll tell you what, though, one more inch of racetrack, and I think uh, Chris Page would have gotten there. So let's pay everybody off here in the third. Number five, McMarkle Sparkle, 643 even and 240. The one crown time, Rockette, 210, 210. Three odds on Greenville, 380. Your $1 Perfecta, 51660. And your 50 cent try, 513, 21 dollars and 40 cents ah, quick note here i pull this back up here from andrew pounds hey dave can you give a shout out to the pounds family and the vfw 3297 of delaware ohio we'll be watching you all day today well thank you andrew we're glad you're uh, enjoying the coverage yep. and we only wish you could be wish here you could drive across town you can in. hop on yeah. your bike or walk here so andrew sure. pounds and the vfw Jason's got the rundown of race three. All right, the five McMarkle Sparkle, six forty three dollars two forty. Second of the one Crown Time Rocket, two ten two ten. Third of the three odds on Greenville, three eighty. Dollar Perfecta, five one six sixty. Fifty cent try, five one three twenty one forty. Rundown for the third, the one Crown Time Rocket, two. The two Beautiful Beach, five. The three odds on Greenville, three. The four Sarah's Surprise, six. The five McMarkle Sparkle, the winner. The six Boundless Dragon, four. Dive of the mile, 152 and three. Recheck, run down, top to bottom. It should read two, five, three, six, one, four on the bottom. Upcoming fourth race, clear. Sponsored by Post Printing. Down to Wendy Ross. Jason, thank you so much. Jim Arledge, congratulations on your win, and you're just going to hang in the winner's circle. And what a nice broke filly you got there, so thank you for that. Joining me now, driver Brett Miller. Brett, you escaped my grasp yesterday. Uh, action uncle in that world record effort. How, how nice is he, and how fun is that to win in that world record fashion? Yeah, he's one of the nicest trotters I've ever sat behind. And uh, believe it or not, he did that awful easy yesterday. He felt like he could have went more. Well, you guys made it look easy, that's for sure. But today, back to business, McMarkle Sparkle. You looked a, a little scared there. As Chris Page, you looked to your right. He was coming at the wire. But, hey, she was still the best today. Yeah, you know, when we hit the wire, I wasn't sure if we held on or not. This, this is one of the best uh, three-year-old pacing fillies in Ohio. We've just had some bad luck and uh, some, you know, some bad posts and a couple bad drives. Uh, but this is a really nice filly. Brett, thank you so much. We're going to let you go. Jimmy, thanks again for, for waiting thank on you. Brett. He appreciates it. Winning connections and winning driver, Brett Miller. And there's Jim Marlage handing the lines back to uh, Brett Miller, a couple of guys uh, that have won an awful lot of races separately and together over the years here in Ohio. Yes, that's for sure. Very uh, successful career Jim had as a, has had as a trainer and Brett as a driver all over the place. Went out to Pocono for a while on the East Coast, and now yes. he's back on he, the Southern Ohio Circuit. He was a driving champion one year at the uh, Meadowlands, and that's uh, always something that would uh, highlight anybody's sure. resume. Sure. And there's a look at McMarkle Sparkle. Nice-looking homebred there, and a great gutsy effort today. Hey, we need another timeout here at the Little Brown Jug. Thursday afternoon action, all 20 races, lots more to come. We will see you at the other end. BMI Federal Credit Union is here for all your lending needs, whether buying a car, paying for college, or starting your family. Let BMI Federal Credit Union help turn your dreams into reality. With our first-time homebuyer program, adjustable or fixed-rate mortgage loans, and personalized member service, now is a great time to purchase or refinance. Our loan specialists will work with you each step of the way. Learn more at bmifcu.org or contact us at 800-233-6880. Let's make it happen together. Ladies and gentlemen, just as we like to harness the power of the Buckeye, you too can harness all the racing excitement. Can we get out of this thing yet? No. Oh, I can hardly breathe. Okay, fine. Oh, oh. lucky I'm the head. I don't feel lucky at all. <laughs> Thank you.
Horse racing is a great sport, and now you can have a horse in the race. Own a little and love it a lot. The Stable.ca is an award-winning horse ownership experience. Purchase as little as 1% of a racehorse and pay a set monthly fee. No surprises, modest investment, low risk, and completely accessible and transparent operations. The Stable.ca offers a unique, engaging racehorse ownership experience and features great customer service and consistent updates about your horse. Our innovative video production team tracks your horse's training progress, and clients are encouraged to visit the horses at any time. The Stable.ca is right for harness racing, and if you want to have a horse in the race, it's right for you, too. For more information about The Stable, email anthony at thestable.ca or call 519-400-4263. Today, the world looks a little different. Between face masks and no in-person events, it seems like we're missing out on everything. Even the little brown jug. We might not be along the track cheering, but the horses are still off and pacing. And Absolute Impressions, the company you have trusted for your brown jug merchandise, has your 2020 commemorative apparel. So no matter where you are, you can place your order from your mobile device or computer. Go to littlebrownjug.com and purchase jug history. Ladies and gentlemen, just as we like to harness the power of the Buckeye, you too can harness all the racing excitement. Can we get out of this thing yet? No. Oh, I can hardly breathe. Okay, fine. Oh, oh. lucky I'm the head. I don't feel lucky at all. <laughs> And we welcome you back. And there's a look at what they will all be competing for for the 75th year here in Delaware, Ohio. The Little Brown Jug races 15 and 16. Two eliminations to uh, narrow the field down to eight. They will come back for the final in race number 20 today, just before 7 o'clock uh, Eastern time in the evening. So it's going to be a long day here. So yes. buckle in. We're ready. We've got snacks. We've got water. We've got uh, everything. And we'd like to have you join us. Uh, speaking of joining us, a uh, couple of Facebook people with some comments there. Ryan Dickey. Kelsey Johnson says she's tuned in on RTN. Thank you, Kelsey. Joe Zambito will be watching. Pa or hashtag send it in. Joe, of course, the announcer uh, up at Buffalo Raceway. So good to have you, Joe. Yeah, I, I had some people checking in, too, and now I lost it, but I'll, I'll jump in when I find them okay. again. Okay, <laughs> I know. We're, we're scrolling and, and, yeah. and everything else on phones, on uh, note, uh, notebooks. Uh, tablets and f everything else. So we'll try to catch up and uh, get to everybody uh, as soon as we possibly can. In the meantime, they'll be stepping out onto the track here for the fourth race. Uh, just a moment. The Ohio Breeders' Championship for the two-year-old pacing Colts and Geldings. We've got a field of six, and we've got a one-to-nine favorite here uh, in, the in the form of Charlie May for trainer Steve Carter and owner and breeder Don Tiger, who we spoke with at length yesterday. Don been a friend of mine for a very long time. Not only uh, is he involved on the uh, backside of owning and breeding horses and stuff like that, uh, he's also an excellent handicapper as well. Uh, which sends me his Kentucky Derby pick. So he does both breeds. That's not easy to do. You, no. you can handicap the harness and the thoroughbreds. Yeah, well, a big difference, that's for sure. All right, let's see how Charlie May looks on the track. We're all rooting for Don. The post parade is up next. In his 54th year as the voice of the Delaware County Fair in the Little Brown Jug, here's Hall of Famer Roger Houston. These are the horses for the Sugar Valley Farm Post Parade. Ohio Breeders' Championship, two-year-old Colton Gelding Pace, $62,446, sponsored by Post Parading. Number one is Pine Grove Racer, Tim Tietrich, the driver. Number two is Charlie May with Brett Miller. Number three, don't hold anything back, the driver, David Miller. Number four, odds on pick six with Peter Wren. Number five, four-star flash, the driver, Ronnie Wren Jr. And number six, Bernard Hanover, Chris Page in the sulky. Win play show, 50 cent perfecta, 50 cent trifecta wagering on the fourth. Don't be shut out. 
Wager now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there is no hotter guy on the planet of harness racing than this gentleman yesterday. We are fortunate enough to be joined by the Double D, as I like to call him in the program comments at the Meadowlands. Dexter, Don Dexter, have you come off cloud nine yet? Yeah, I guess we have to, Dave, because we've got to turn around today <laughs> and, uh, you know, get back to action. And we've got some, uh, you know, pretty important stuff going on today as well. So, uh, you know, it was definitely a massive thrill yesterday, but, uh, you know, full concentration on the horses we have in today. So, so let me run this down. Six winners on the card. A, a couple of world records, a sweep of the jugette with Party Girl Hill. I mean, have we run out of words to talk about this amazing filly? Um, well, I mean, she she is an amazing filly. You know, uh, she's proved it all season long. And uh, what she did yesterday, I think, especially in her first heat, uh, you know, uh, she didn't let any, anybody down. That's for sure. And uh, you know, the final, she was uh, she was doing that pretty comfortable too. I think I could have probably shaken her loose and gone a little bit faster, but uh, she'd already in such a big heat uh, in the first division so uh, you know she was pretty impressive I think I read somewhere that the plugs were still in yeah both divisions plugs were still in and she, she we do get a good kick out of her when they come out so uh, you know she's an amazing animal and uh, Dexter it almost seemed like in the in the first uh, you know elimination or the second elimination that you were in you weren't even worried about exactly you know getting the lead getting the pocket you're just making sure no one's in her way I mean she's just that good if nothing happens crazy in the race, it just seems like she's going to win. Yeah, exactly. I expected to be a bit of speed early because, uh, you know, obviously uh, obviously Timmy and Joey both wanted to, you know, get out of there fast and get a two-hole behind her. So, you know, I just stayed out of that early action and then we moved to the quarter pole. And, uh, you know, the only worry I had going into the final was, uh, you know, how she would bounce back after that tough first elimination. But uh, as soon as she put her first, first foot on the track, their second time round, I knew she was okay because she was probably brighter than the first time. That, that back half, first over in 53 and change, that that isn't the, just not the way things are supposed to work in no, this game. But she's, I mean, it was unbelievable. She's she's a special individual. Yeah, especially around a half mile track, you know. Um, yeah, 53 and three half on the you know on the inside is a, a good last half, but she was one off. So yeah, well, it's um, you know she did all the hard work. Uh, I was just lucky enough to sit behind her. All right, well, that was yesterday, and today is today. But I want to ask you this uh, kind of background question here. This, is this the second or third year you've been here with us at the Little Brown Jug? Yeah, this is my second. I, my first year was last year, and, uh, you know, uh, growing up in New Zealand, there's probably, uh, you know, I always heard about Little Brown Jug and Jug Week my whole entire life. So to be here for the first time last year was a massive thrill, obviously, to come back again and uh, to win the Jug it's, uh, you know, it's... Uh, you know, lifetime dream come true. It has to be, and uh, you look forward to your drives a little bit later on. But listen, you, you're doing a lot of driving today for some Ohio connections. Now, with the year of experience under your belt, give us an idea of how that works. Do people just list you on the entry sheet and you meet them in the paddock, or do they call you beforehand and ask if they can put you down? Usually you just get listed, and uh, you'll see them here in the paddock about before you go on the track, or, you know, some of them you've seen around. It's um, where we've been racing lately. I've been doing a little bit of racing. You know, race Soto a couple of times. A few of them been racing out in Lexington, so you'll be seeing them around. But then obviously some of them, you, uh, you I'll just see them here in the paddock here before we go on the track. In one of the post-race interviews yesterday, you spoke at length about how good Chris and Nicola Ryder have been to you. I want you to say that again in case anybody wasn't tuned in. Yeah, I mean, like, um, the Riders have been uh, family friends with uh, my family for over 40 years now, and, um, you know, they were instrumental in me coming here two years ago and then um, not only that when I got here they gave me huge support you know I got to drive better's wish last year straight off the bat so you know they've done um, a, a huge amount of um, you know, things for me since I got here and uh, they're just such nice people and it's um, yeah, yeah. it was a really big thrill to win the, the jug for them yesterday hey and Dexter I mean obviously you were very successful in New England New or excuse me, New Zealand, <laughs> not New England. Probably in New Zealand. New England Tom England Brady too. was successful in New Zealand. <laughs> he, was, New England. he was a good excuse for me. Yeah. Uh, you were so successful in New Zealand, and you had to be confident when you came over here. Did you think it would happen for you this fast that you're like, you know, at the top of the driving ranks in North America? Uh, well, I didn't. Even, I didn't actually think it would happen this fast. I didn't really think it would happen at all. Really, I mean. Um, you know, I think uh, my success in New Zealand uh, might have played a small part, but I was really just hoping to get get over here and um, you know give it a go. But going into last year, I just wanted to get a nice 
one nice stakes horse to be able to follow around a drive at some of the races, you know, so, um, you know, things really took off, but uh, I got a great, you know, amount of support, and I was lucky that the horse I got to sit behind last year and again this year. You've got a couple of chances to make it a clean sweep of the uh, two days here. You've got CU at the beach from the rail in the first elimination today. You've driven this one for uh, Ronnie Burke, but I heard there have been some radical equipment changes made. Well, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I haven't talked to Ronnie. Ronnie's been pretty busy out here. He's got, <laughs> Maybe he didn't uh, want to tell you. In today probably, but he will talk to me later on. Uh, you know, we've got a few hours till that race comes around. But uh, see, so yeah, the beach has been really, really good lately. He's, uh, without the best trips in the world, his last start of the Meadows actually blew the blew the second last turn and uh, lost a few lengths. We we sent him wide in the last turn. He run a really strong mile. So um, you know, if he gets around here. Okay, from the rail, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he showed up and ran a big, big heat here. And you got a live one also in the second elimination with uh, Captain Midnight for Tony Alanya. Yeah, he's, um, you know, I'm looking forward to him today. He he was uh, great last week at Mohawk. Uh, Talked Dan McCarthy, who usually drives him. He said he's uh, never been better this, this season, so he's really in uh, hitting his top form. And obviously, he was a great two year old last year. So Tony said he trained him on the half there at, at Lexington before he come here and was extremely happy with him so and he's got a good draw to use as well you All think right. the folks in new zealand would hear about it if you won the jug at and the jug in the same uh, week oh, i know my family would anyway <laughs> <laughs> they'll be keeping on top of it but um you know uh, they don't miss a beat so it's uh, good to have some support from back home that's for sure all right dexter we'll be rooting for you we'd love to see you uh, in action yesterday and throughout the rest of the uh, grand circuit harness season Enjoy the rest of the day, sir, and thanks for coming on with us. Thank you very much, gentlemen. All right, Dexter Dunn off a heck of a day yesterday on Jugget Day with Party Girl Hill. Up next, race four, Ohio Breeders' Championship Pacers. Here is the voice, the Hall of Famer, Mr. Roger Houston. Two-year-old Colton Gelding Pacers in behind the gate. The Mike Wokenberg starting gate swings into the stretch, and here they come. Charlie May goes for the lead. Pine Grove Racers second. Don't hold anything back. Gets away third. Into the turn. Odds on pick six. Fourth. Racing fifth. Four star flash and trailing the field. Bernard Hanover. Straight alignment as they race down the backside. Going to the first quarter mark. Brett Miller has Charlie May on the engine by a length and a half. Racing second. Pine Grove Racer. Opening panel 28 seconds or cakewalking. As they race around the turn, racing third, don't hold anything back. Racing fourth, odds on pick six. Racing fifth, four-star flash and trailing the field. Bernard Hanover, Chris Page can see them all. No movement to go after the leader, Charlie May. Brett Miller's getting everything he wants his way. Coming to the halfway point. Racing second, Pine Grove Racer. Third, don't hold anything back. Halfway home, 57-1. The tempo's bound to pick up as they race around the turn. Charlie May, the leader. Pine Grove Racer is second from way back. Here comes four-star flash. Ronnie Rent first to move. Dave Miller comes to the outside. Don't hold anything back. And Charlie May opens up by two quick lengths. He's going to have to deal with a Buckeye. Don't hold anything back. Second on the outside. Pine Grove Racer is third. Three quarters, 125 and one. 28 backside. It's Charlie May by a length and three quarters. Pine Grove Racer second. Don't hold anything back. Third. Racing fourth. Odds on pick six. Eighth of a mile to go in Ohio. And it's all Charlie May and Brett Miller. They had it from the get-go. Trolling away. Charlie May. One, 52, two fifths. As if there was a doubt. <laughs> yep. Don Tiger headed for the winner's circle, the Tiger crew. That's right. He's given us the business, too. Yep. <laughs> and rightfully so. What a, what a ride this uh, horse has uh, put him on and his uh, buddies as well throughout the season. Uh, going over the $300,000 earning mark uh, today with this uh, front-end masterpiece. Brett Miller is going to visit the winner's circle for the second time today, but... Uh, have to do too much work on this one. No, this was a very easy one. And he drew in the 
a, a different division than uh, the Chewbacca horse. They were both ended up basically unbeatable in their uh, well. They had the war. The, and they had the war in the sire stakes exactly. final with Sciota on Super Nights. So, so they they both uh, had a jogger today. And uh, Charlie May, what a season! Eight nine starts, seven wins, two place finishes, well over three hundred thousand in earnings in just nine starts, and never leaving Ohio. Yeah, unbelievable. The the way that Don told us the story yesterday about how he acquired the mare, he'd gotten a lucky phone call. She had been in the uh, the blooded horse sale, I think. He bought her. It's his first brood mare ever, and uh, he finally produced a, uh, I guess, a male. And Charlie May is the result. Look at the stride on that uh, powerful two-year-old by McArdle. Win number seven for Charlie May. And a pretty popular result for the betters. Uh, sent off at uh, one to nine. Two one four three is uh, up on the board. Uh, the 152 and two clocking, not his lifetime mark, as he uh, accomplished a, a win at Scioto in that final of 150 uh, and two. I think this is the uh, world record for uh, two-year-old geldings on a half-mile track. Steve Bates and sent me was 151 and one, so that wasn't in jeopardy today. But there was no chance of it being in jeopardy with the slow pace. Right. I mean, Brett's not going to worry about trying to break a world yep. record if he can get to the half in 57. He's going to do it. He did it just yep. about 57 and one is probably about yep. as slow as he can go. Well. There's the orange shirts of Don Tiger. He's ready to uh, welcome his Charlie May back to the Sugar Valley Farms Winner's Circle. This time, moving into the Sugar Valley Farm Winner's Circle. The home of Down by the Seaside. One of the, well, let's put it this way. Probably the best two-year-old pacer in the state of Ohio. And more than likely, one of the best as well in the nation. In the winner's circle, Charlie May, Don Tiger, Cannonsburg, Steve Carter, the trainer, Brett Miller's second of the afternoon, his eighth this week. He's the leading driver with wins. Third on the all-time list, 129 wins. Two-year-old gelling by McArdle at a stipple Hanover. Seventh win and nine starts. Earnings approaching $330,000. From the next generation at Sayoto, July the 4th, the first horse in harness racing to break the maiden, banking $75,000. The pride and joy of Don Tiger of Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, Charlie May. Thank you very much, Roger. There are the prices, and they're not very much. The minimum across the board for Charlie May, 210, 210, 210. The one Pine Grove racer, 340, 260. The four odds on pick, 6, 260. Gimmick short as well. Your 2-1 Perfecta, $3. Your 50 cent try, 214, $4.10. Now, one thing, Dave. Uh, now let's go to Roger first for the rundown. Results are official. Fourth race. Number one, Pine Grove Racer, two. Number two, Charlie May, the winner. Number three, don't hold anything back, four. Number four, odds on pick six, three. Number five, four star flesh, six. Number six, Bernard Hanover, five. Top down, two, one, four. Three, six, five on the bottom. The mile, 152, two fifths. Post time for the fifth race. Coming up, Mike Wilder on the one, Mick Matters. To the winner's circle, Wendy Ross. Thank you very much, Roger. Roger, I think anyone watching, this is what dreams are made of in, when you're in harness racing, especially when you're an owner. A trainer, you want to train a colt like this. A driver, you want to drive a colt like this. But as an owner, you want to breed a colt like this. Charlie May, owner Don Tiger. Don, how are you feeling right now? you got to be over the moon. feel great. You can't see my smile under this mask, but... Uh... What amazing feeling, yeah. Well, well, I certainly, we've we've heard you tell the story uh, throughout the week, and, and, and what a story it is to, to breed a colt like this, and today he gets his seventh win on the year, takes that bank for over 300,000. How are you feeling? A little bit heavier, right? Oh, I feel super heavy, and I don't mind. <laughs> Getting here, you were a fan of harness racing, racing horses at the Meadows. Your prize horse, Sam Hill, Charlie May, certainly stands proud next to him, right? Yeah, he does. Sam Hill's still the best horse I ever owned. Uh, Charlie's got a little more work to do, but I think he's going to get in there. He's doing a great job for sure. 
His two-year-old campaign has been nothing but fantastic. You said on there yesterday, as a three-year-old, you're going all out staking him next year, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, this is a dream come true for me. I believe that Heart of Chewbacca and Charlie May can compete with anybody in the country. I stick to that. I'm going to stake my horse. I told Denny, too. I seen him at the, sa the sale. I said, you guys stake yours heavy. Let's go on the road, go to Meadowlands Pace. Anywhere I can get into, I'm going to go. Brett Miller told me this is a grand circuit horse, so we're going to find out. Well, Don, thank you so much. Congratulations. Now, you've been telling me you had a question to ask I got a me. trivia question it? for you. This is okay. very important. Who is the leading two-year-old money earner in the country, regardless of sex and gait? Well, let's, uh, is it Charlie May? It's Charlie May. <laughs> I, thought, I knew you'd get the answer. Great job. Congratulations to you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Winning owner of Charlie May, Don Tiger. Well, it doesn't get much uh, more exciting than that, even with a trivia question. Thank God Wendy got it uh, right. <laughs> As we uh, head for a break here uh, after four races, how about a shout-out to Jesse Pearson and Peter McWigan and Eddie Brookman tuning in all the way from Sydney, Nova Scotia at the Winner's Circle. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll take a time out. Much more from Delaware, Ohio. Little Brown Jug Day continues after this. Bow River has been designing Little Brown Jug jewelry for over a quarter of a century. Go to bowriverjewelry.com to see our limited edition 75th anniversary Little Brown Jug pin and 50th anniversary Jugette pin under the Little Brown Jug tab. Browse our standard bread collection, equestrian collection, and our expanded equestrian bridal collection. Bowriverjewelry.com, original designs and quality you can trust. Harris Hoosier Park invites you to an exclusive opportunity to bid on a 2021 breeding of the top six stallions in harness racing as part of the Breeders' Crown Charity Challenge. The breedings will be auctioned off at the 2020 Lexington Select Yearling Sale on October 6th at 6.45 p.m. at the Fanzig Tipton Sales Pavilion. All proceeds of the Breeders' Crown Charity Challenge will be donated to charity. Join us in person or bid online at www.lexingtonselected.com. Sugar Valley Farm in Delaware, Ohio, is proud to be a part of the sports rejuvenation in the Buckeye State. Dedicated to providing the best stallions available at any price point. Lather Up, who equaled the all-time record of 146, joins world champion Down by the Seaside. 2009 Pacer of the Year, well said. Mr. Wiggles, sire of 2015 Horse of the Year, Wiggle It, Jiggle It. And $2 million winning trotter, Creatine. For more, log on to SugarValleyFarmStallions.com.